You know, I have a million conspiracy theories. We could do a whole nother day on that. <laughs> Damn. You know what I'm saying? I mean, another one is uh, my guy, Pimp C. Right. Who Rest was like my little brother and who I saw probably 48 hours before he passed. Wow. And I was supposed to meet up with him the day he, not the, I don't know when he passed, but that Saturday he came to my show. And Saturday we said, let's go dinner tomorrow. And then Sunday we got on the phone and he was like, Man, I'm busy. I'm like, damn, I'm busy. We couldn't meet up. And then Monday, I didn't talk to him. And then Tuesday, they found him. And wow. I'm like, I'm like, so right off the rip, I'm like, what happened? What happened? Like, what happened? And all I get back is, well, he was in his room by himself, and they found him. I'm like, well, was the door? Did it have that thing on it? Like, was it the lock? Like, like, tell me something. Like, you know what I mean? And the most I could get was, I never got if the door was locked or not. I had to break it down. Because if the door wasn't locked, that means somebody left out. Right. If the door was locked, that means he felt good. He locked it. He was in there. Right. It, it's a whole different level of what happened. A lot of shit goes out the window if I just know that part. Right. But then it's like I heard some shit about he had his clothes on or something. I don't know. Like I, I don't really know if all this is true, but I just heard parts like I'm like, what happened to my guy? Right. And then they come out with the official. It was a mixture, of some stuff, the prescription and something else or something that I don't really know, but. With me, I never really heard uh, something that would give that closure for me. Mm -hmm. I never really heard anything tangible or true, like what happened to my guy. Right. So that's I, crazy. I, I have this theory that's bigger than just Pimp C, and there's a lot of mysterious celebrities, a, a lot of mysterious celebrity deaths mm -hmm. in hotel rooms. Wow. And all these celebrities die in these hotel rooms by themselves. And... What do you think happened then? I don't know what happened to them, but I know that when you die, everything gets all valuable and shit. I don't, you know, it, you know, you, you get marketed in a different way when you're dead. So one one of the things you got to look at as soon as a celebrity dies is, it was it a homicide? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you got all these like mysterious like OD, it could be an OD or a suicide or just found it. It's just a lot of celebrities. I think I don't think I've, I've mentioned this shit out loud quite a few times, but I don't think anybody ever went and really there's nothing on the internet about celebrities that died alone in hotel rooms. Crazy. There's a long list. Yeah. Of famous ones, not so famous ones. Back in the day, it's been happening forever. Mm -hmm. Forever. How did that affect you, just losing, you know, close friends throughout these years? Well, I'm telling you how it affected me. I never really got the fucking answers right. on what the fuck happened. And right. it bothers me because he was in L.A. It bothers me because right. I was supposed to meet up with him day before. It bothers me because I just, we had an amazing night just falling out. I did a show at the House of Blues, sold out. He pulled up to the show. He gets on stage. He literally played by Hype Man all night. Like right. he was ad libbing and doing the hype man for me on stage during my show. I think that was the last time I ever did House of Blues. And it's just, it's just an amazing memory. And then I lost my guy. And it's like, to this day, I'm still like, I st I'm still looking for like, what the fuck happened? Right. Like, what the fuck happened? And I, I am, um, yeah, that's, I, I didn't know he was going to bring that one up. That kind of, that one, that one really affected me. That's like, that always brings up some shitty ass feelings, you know? For sure. Like Pimp C is a real, it's a part that don't really go away with that guy. Right, for sure. Did you ever uh, like sip or, you know, dabble? Um, one night I uh, was in Houston, Texas. And, you know, I'm a guy like, I ain't going to lie. I'm not going to do crack <laughs> or fucking heroin or nothing of the heroin family. Like back in the day when I was a youngster, when the crack first came out, we would take the rocks and smoke them in joints. But then we realized somewhere down the line that that shit was super addictive. Mm -hmm. And if you was smart, you got the fuck off that shit and quit smoking them. We called them uh, Grimmies. Okay. Everybody in every city had a little nickname for them. But luckily, uh, those things right there would lead you to actually being a pipe smoker. Luckily, that didn't happen on this side. But I shy away from the cocaine and the heroin and all that. I, I did my little dabbling in the cocaine world. Snorted a lot of coke in the 80s. Got that out the way. But uh, I'm not um, I'm not afraid to like be in a certain city, and you go, 
well, you know, I hear, man, we all we smoke is PCP. Right. I'm like, well, shit, let me hit that shit <laughs> and take a little hit and see what it do. I'm not, a, I, I know that the narcotics of like the heroines and the shit, I'm, mm -hmm. those are very addictive things. I'm not going to try crystal meth or, or fucking hit a rock, crack rock or something. That's like, none of that's going, that addiction shit. I don't even like dabbing because <laughs> I have a rule. If you do drugs, if you take a drug and 10 seconds later, you're high. That ain't the drug you want. So I don't take, I don't do any drugs that get you high instantly. That's stuck around. I respect that. So, um, I was in Houston and, you know, it was a sip and syrup, syrup environment. For sure. For one time, I sipped. I was like, give me some of that shit. I forgot what flavor of soda I used, but I sipped. And we even, um, we dipped, we dipped a blunt in the, whatever they pour in the thing, they, they dipped the blunt in the syrup. That was a oh shit! Like I, I, I don't know what the Term shit was. Yeah. But, um. That one night, yeah, I know what it is. How was it? How did it feel? Shouldn't make you sleepy. I don't know. Oh okay. I, it wasn't my drug. It's not my. Right. It's not my choice. And later on, to come to find out that is of the opioid mm -hmm. origin, I'm, you know, I'm glad that I didn't take a liking to it. I think that um. I'm I'm really not for. Things that get you that addicted. Things that you have to... Cigarettes. I used to smoke cigarettes in high school. And when I quit smoking cigarettes, it was very hard. Right. It was a, like an excruciating experience just to quit. It took me a week. And then after that week, it was like painful to watch people smoke. And, you know... Congrats. A I week? That's it? Hmm? I feel like a week is pretty good for... Cigarettes is addicting. But I was making a lot of money okay. to be a rapper on stage. And the cigarettes was making me be out of breath. I love I've been that. smoking 10th, Respect. 11th, 12th grade... After high school, and Respect. then I get on stage to get like, you know, five, ten thousand a night, and I'm like out of breath. I'm like, yeah. fuck these cigarettes. I, so I quit. That. I quit for the job. Right. And then, um, you know, just things like that. You hear the story about what people got to go through to get off heroin. And I'm like, just kind of don't, don't do them kind of shits. Avoid them shits because them oxycontins and shit, all them shits. Just avoid that shit in life if you can. I had surgery only on my little big toe, but. It was surgery. Right. The day I got the surgery, I fell off a motorcycle. Damn. The day I got the surgery, they put that thing where they call it a block, block, they freeze your whole mm -hmm. fucking, numb your whole damn ankle up just for a little toe surgery. <laughs> and they gave me the pills and the prescriptions and shit. It was oxycotton, oxycodone, whatever the fucking name of that shit is. Mm -hmm. And I got home from the surgery. And at like five in the morning, I, I got out. The, it was a one day thing. Going to the hospital like ten in the morning, do the surgery. I'm a, I'm back home at five p.m. So I'm sitting there, got the foot in the air, and um, fell asleep. Just off what it, what it, you know, I wasn't. I didn't take none of the pills or nothing. Five o'clock in the morning, my fucking toe woke me up like it was like it was a doctor down there cutting it open. Like the, all the pain, just the, the shit wore off. All the pain came. I grabbed that fucking bottle. Whatever it was, taking one or whatever it was, I took the fucking pill. I mean, it was like four or five in the morning. I woke up at like 10, like, like took the pill and I woke up 10 in the morning and woke up and that shit started hurting again. Mm. I was like, fuck, I took another one of the painkillers. It was like 5 p.m., like two seconds later. I'm like, damn. So then get up again. And then the pain kick in. I took another one. It was the next morning. I was like, I ain't taking no more of these motherfuckers. Like, I'm talking like, it was just like, you blink. And it was like six hours later. The next day, I was in so much motherfucking pain. I don't know who I gave them pills. So I was like, you can take this shit out. I just, that shit just hurt forever. I was like, I've right. never taken that shit. Like, I'm not taking anything that blanks you out. You, you can't remember what happened the last six hours? Yeah. I don't know if I was asleep or awake. I don't know if I was walking around or not. Right. Fuck that. And then I heard that these are the ones that if you take them for a few days, you hooked. Fuck that. Crazy. What so, you, you know, I'm against all that type of addictive stuff. I am. I respect that a lot. I actually interviewed, well, I don't know if you saw Juice World's documentary. Mm -hmm. um, homie was popping like 10 perks, like nine, mm -hmm. like so many perks. You know what I day. tell people in L.A.? Don't come to L.A. and start snorting coke. <laughs> That's one of my key uh, go-to advice. Like, those don't get into the snoring coke. They're like, coke, like, people say shit like this. 
have a night hanging out with some new friends. They turn them on to Snort and Lion. They feel like, I fucking love cocaine. <laughs> like, I bet you fucking do, but watch what I tell you. Hang around that shit for about a year and watch who you are out here in L.A. That shit. That, that going in that life and, like, the wrong person telling you the wrong thing is, like, cool and fly. I mean, I can't intervene and hate on it. Mm-hmm. But if you get an earful of what I got to say, I'm like, bro, stick to the weed. Drink some drink if you want to, you know, occasional Molly or something. <laughs> and then with this fentanyl, I'm like, I'm I'm really against a lot of shit. This shit's scary. Right. That somebody invites you to take a one on one and you fucking die. You just want to bump it and you die. That's fucked up. Like it ain't right. same what we out here having fun for. Right. So I'm I'm really I'm really against the the opioid. I respect that avenue, whatever you want to call it. Right. So. Sip and syrup, you know. I, I, how many rappers are coming up right now going, I want to get off this shit. I just got off it. I'm like, it's like it's hard. Right. Shit's crazy. But so. then what do you think about someone like DMX who went to rehab? You know, I'm sure he wanted to stop, but he couldn't. And it's just such an L for hip hop, I feel like, when these things happen. It's life. It's like, it's life. Okay. It reflects real life. That's true. What's happening in hip hop is a reflection of what's happening in life. And it's really happening out there on a way larger scale in hip hop. And, For sure, that's true. You know the people who are ODing. This, this is a whole thing. I know with the opioids, with the fucking, you know, with the people out there who brought that shit to the table and made billions and are making billions. And to this day, we still don't have a a, a fucking solution for saving lives. So, right. You know, I don't know, man. I just I, I, I'm like I, I learned to enjoy my little weed and my um and my drinking, like you know that. Pills and powders is like not not popping right now for me. 